Thank you for watching this video from Kingsway Soft. Today, I will be introducing the Snowflake components for within our SSIS Productivity Pack offering. The SSIS Productivity Pack is a collection of premium SSIS components which enable greater developer productivity and increases the power of SSIS. As of this recording, the SSIS Productivity Pack version 21.1 offers three components related to Snowflake. Snowflake Connection Manager, Snowflake Source Component, and Snowflake Destination Component. The Connection Manager component facilitates connecting to Snowflake from within SSIS. Once you have a Snowflake Connection Manager, you can use the Snowflake Source Component to read or retrieve data from your Snowflake instance. Alternatively, you can also use the Snowflake Destination Component to write data to your selected Snowflake instance. Let's take a closer look at how a particular integration with Snowflake can be configured starting with the Connection Manager. The foundation of any integration package will be dependent on your Connection Manager. Both the Snowflake Source and Snowflake Destination components require the Snowflake Connection Manager to be established first. Right-click on the Connection Manager area down below to add a new connection. We will select the Snowflake item to add this new Connection Manager. The component will require credentials to specify the Snowflake instance you are connecting to, starting with the account. Please note that the account here would be the full account name provided by Snowflake. That may include the regional and cloud platform information as applicable. There are three options for authentication types, basic, OAuth2, and JWT. When the JWT option is selected, you will need to select a path to the private key file to use for key pair authentication, as well as a password to use for decrypting the private key if the key is encrypted. When OAuth2 mode is selected, you can generate a token file where you can authorize your OAuth app to generate the token from the service endpoint. There are two options for this authentication, provided by Kingsway Soft or by using your own application registration with Snowflake. If the provided by Kingsway Soft option is selected, the component will use the client ID and secret that's provided by Kingsway Soft for your convenience. This is the default behavior of the component. It is important to note that this should never be used for production purposes. If you would like to use your own application registration with Snowflake, select the My Own option. To create your own Snowflake authorization credentials, you will first need to configure an OAuth security integration, which requires an administrator with account admin role in particular. For today's example, we will select the basic option and specify our user and password in the following fields. The role option allows you to specify the role to which your user will be connected as. There are a few options listed in the drop-down menu. The role you select will depend on your business requirements. The warehouse option is a drop-down list which allows you to pick one of the Snowflake warehouses available in your Snowflake instance. Heading to the advanced settings page, we have proxy server settings in the case where a proxy may be required. We also have a timeout option in which you can specify the timeout in seconds to use when attempting to connect to the server. We also have a feature that allows you to ignore certificate errors. Lastly, there is also an option for retry on intermittent errors. This option is intended to help recover from possible intermittent outages or disruption of service so that your integration does not have to be stopped due to a temporary networking issue. We have designed this option so that it should only retry when it's deemed to be safe to do so, but there may be exceptions. Before we hit OK, we should test the connection to make sure our information is correct and we can connect successfully. Now let's drag the Snowflake source components from the SSIS toolbox to the design surface. Double click to open its editor form. The Snowflake source component is used to read or retrieve data from Snowflake instances and produce column data, which can then be consumed by a downstream SSIS pipeline component. Let's specify our Snowflake Connection Manager. The database drop-down menu displays a list of available databases in the Snowflake instance defined by our Connection Manager. Once you select a database here, the component will automatically populate the schema drop-down list, which is a list of available schemas in your Snowflake database. When you select a schema here, the component will automatically populate the table drop-down list, 
which in turn will populate the command property once you select a table. The command timeout option allows you to specify the number of seconds for the command timeout values. The default value is 120 seconds. Next, we have a command text box where you can enter a select statement to refine the data that will be retrieved by the source component. A basic select statement will be easily generated by selecting a table from the data source property, which you can then further customize the command to your liking to perform some powerful queries. As you can see, the command text box supports the use of user-defined and system variables. You also have the option to import SQL commands from a file into the command property, as well as saving the SQL command to a file using the respective import and export buttons. Finally, there's a preview button where you will have a dialog box to show the results of executing the text in the command property space. It's important to mention the preview box will show up to the first 100 rows. If the command makes any changes to the database, the changes will appear in the preview but are rolled back immediately. Changes to the database will only commit at runtime. Let's head to the columns page, where we will see a list of all available fields being retrieved. As an additional feature, our components include a refresh component button where the component will update to the latest metadata. This is especially useful for cases where we have created or modified any fields in Snowflake for the specified entity which would otherwise require deleting and recreating the components to reflect the mapping on the columns page. Let's hit OK to finish configuring the Snowflake source component. Our example today will update Snowflake contacts to our data reader to show you how the data flows from the source to destination component. We can now execute this task successfully. To demonstrate the Snowflake destination component, we'll connect to an upstream pipeline component and open the editor form. Let's select a Snowflake connection manager. There are six actions available. Insert, where you can add records to the destination table. Update, where you can update existing records in the destination table. Upsert, where you can either update an existing record or insert a new record. Delete, where you can delete existing records from the destination table. Full sync, where you can synchronize input data. Now this option differs from the upsert action in that it can delete those records in the target system, but not in the source system. And finally, you can write your own custom database command. When the custom command option is selected, a command text box and tree view will appear, which you may find familiar to our previous source components. Let's select the update action. The database dropdown menu displays a list of available databases in our Snowflake instance defined by our connection manager. Once we select the database here, the component will automatically populate the schema dropdown list, which is a list of available schemas in our Snowflake database. When you select a schema here, the component will automatically populate the table dropdown list, which in turn will populate the command property once we select a table. You also have the option to create a Snowflake table, which will prompt the Snowflake table creator to auto-generate a command based on our selected connection manager and input columns to create the new table. You can further customize this command to suit your needs. Once completed, selecting the execute command button will complete the process. If the component was successful in creating your new table, the new table will be available for selection in the table dropdown list. The command timeout option allows you to specify the number of seconds for the command timeout values. The default value is 120 seconds. The use temp table of optimization allows you to populate a temp table with all of the rules first. Then the components will merge them into the target table. When this option is checked, it generally increases the component's performance. In addition, when this option is enabled, the next option, Use Bulk Copy, will also be available for our selection. The Use Bulk Copy option is available for all actions except when the custom command is selected. This is used to load data from staged files to an existing table. The following connections are supported to be used as staging locations Amazon S3, and Azure Blob Storage, both of which are also available in our SSIS Productivity Pack offering. Now when this option is enabled, the next field, Bulk Copy Connection Manager, will be available for our selection. If you would like to remove the files from the stage location once the copy is done, you can enable the Remove Uploaded Files Upon Completion checkbox. 
Now it's important to mention here that the file will be deleted regardless of whether the write operation was successful or not. We have an additional option where we can enable the checkbox to prevent null overwrites. There's a batch size option where you can specify how many records will be written to the target in a single service call. Lastly, we can specify how the input duplicates should be handled. This section is only available when the use temp table for optimization option is enabled for the following actions, update, upsert, delete, and full sync options. There are three options, raise error, which is the default option, remove all but last, and remove all but first. Let's change our write action to custom command, where we can now have a command text box to specify how the component will execute when writing data to Snowflake. Please be aware, however, that the columns page is not available when custom command is selected as a write mode. For our example today, we will select the insert action. Heading to the columns page, we can map the columns from upstream components to fields of the specified destination table in the general page. An important feature available on this page is a lookup feature, where the components can perform a lookup based on input values. Applicable fields will have the ability to open the virtual lookup input column by selecting the ellipsis button. The following screen will present you with a target table, which is a read-only property showing the destination table selected. The target column is a read-only property that shows a target column configured to use the lookup feature. You can select your specific lookup table from the dropdown list. It will display available tables for the database. You can select the returning column from the drop-down list, which will display available columns for the specified lookup table. When the default value is enabled, the component will use this default value to write to the target column should the input value lookup fail. The lookup conditions can be set by working with the conditions grid that we see here in the middle section. The plus and minus buttons allows you to add or remove conditions. There are logical operators like and, or, and so on that can be used. The input value for the lookup condition can either be an input column, a static value, or a variable. Based on the conditions chosen, a select query will be created in the bottom pane. Let's head back to the main destination component. Navigating to the pre and post commands page, this can be used to specify any command that needs to be run before and after the component has been executed. The pre-command area will be executed in pre-execute. The post-command area will be executed in post-execute. Now, if we do not want to execute any commands, we can leave these fields as empty. The last page is the error handling page, where you can define your error handling strategies. With Snowflake destination components, we offer two outputs, default output and error output. The default output represents the records that have been passed successfully to Snowflake. The failed records are directed to the error output, where there are three error handling mechanisms to choose from. The default option is to fail an error, where the entire data flow task will fail as soon as an error occurs. There is also the redirect rows to error output, where the error output will contain failed records with extra columns, error code, error column, and error message. The ignore error option is generally not recommended. There is also an option that can be used to enable output bulk copy information to log during runtime. This option is only available when the relevant use bulk copy option has been enabled from the previous general page. There is also the enable columns for default output section, which you can use to enable or disable the additional columns in the destination component's default output. The affected rows option reports the number of affected rows from the SQL script executed for each incoming row. However, please be aware that this option is not available when the batch mode is used. Let's click OK to finish configuring our destination components. We can now execute this task successfully. This concludes a demonstration of the Snowflake components within our SSAS productivity pack. There are many other components in the SSAS productivity pack that enables developers to accomplish more in SSIS in a much more productive fashion. Please feel free to take a look at our other videos available for viewing on our website or YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video. For any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us.